Okay, so this is a free-to-play horror game on Steam called Black Rose. Can you tell I'm trying to be on theme? And apparently we have a abandoned, supposedly haunted funeral, like, home to explore? Oh goody, quick time events. In this mode, you follow the investigations of a mortician who worked at a funeral home many years ago before an unknown disaster killed all the employees. Doesn't feel like a horror setting yet. So... Are we just getting instantly dropped into this? Alright, let's go explore the open door. Seems nice and inviting. Okay, shift is run. Visitation room. Which is very, very locked. You know, it kind of reminds me of Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion, just slightly on the graphics and mostly with the footsteps. <laughs> oh. Pain and suffering has warped their bodies. Don't you love a cryptic message that may or may not be written in blood? Cue small, mischievous ghosts floating around thread sharpie giggling. <laughs> else here? Probably. Also, spoiler alert, it's mouse click to open doors. I've been walking up to them pressing E. <laughs> Can't help but think that looks weird, but maybe that would keep my eyes. I guess they're pretty serious by keeping this door shut. I wonder if the keys are around here somewhere. I'm sure they are. I just don't know where. Boss says not to go near Myrtle's coffin. Why won't the grave digger bury it anyway? It's not like what Boss says is true. I mean, the dead can't really talk. Can they? I have a feeling that we're going to find out. I feel like that notice board may become relevant. It's jammed, but I might be able to force it open. I would need to ram it a couple of times. Press and hold space. I appreciate the, like, simplicity of the controls. And it actually telling you how to do things. There's a baby monitor here. Strange. Oh, no. Nothing good ever comes from a baby monitor. Why are we taking it? Myrtle. Perhaps I don't want to find out who. I don't want to go downstairs, but I'm going downstairs. Hello? Hello? Creepy voice, I'm downstairs. Oh, shit. They didn't mean the main stairs, did they? Come on, this is the creepiest basement stairs ever. I don't care that it's in a funeral home and it's, you know, probably just down to the morgue, which is, okay, yeah. But that doesn't even make it any better. That's, no, 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 no. I 
I don't like this. Too many doorways. I don't like it. Her eyes. Don't look her in the eyes. Hmm. Okay. Okay. And there's the other, the other baby monitor. The other baby monitor is down here. This is weird. I'm not sure I want to be here anymore. Something feels wrong. You think? Do you really think so? Oh boy. Can I pick that one up or? Also, what is that? Either something's glitching or? <laughs> I mean, I think I managed to not look her in the eyes. Chapel. No. Okay. Let's just... Nope. They stitched him back together, did they? Who was he? Do we have a sock puppet in here? Haunted sock puppet's kind of funny. I mean, uh, not at all funny. What, what you mean?
question is, what's this key for? One option is it's for the chest. Could be for that very locked door that was uh, somewhere. Oh. The only way to keep Myrtle in her coffin for good is to lock it. I thought I had locked it before, but someone else must have unlocked it. Either that or the lid was forced open. <laughs> oh boy. There is a key in here. It's labeled Myrtle. On a scale of 1 to 10, do you think she's going to instantly kill us for lifting that key? Uh, she in here? She probably do it from outside if we lock this thing. and I wouldn't follow a note's advice to lock you in there. Where did this even come from? What? <sighs> I'm not asking you to speak to me, but I made something for you today. At first, I thought about going out and picking you the prettiest flowers I could find, but decided not to. Flowers are beautiful, but eventually they all die. Instead, I made you an origami rose. Paper will never wither, just like my love for you. This rose is black, because the love we once shared is gone. It was lost in the darkness, and there's no ignoring that. However, even if this love is no longer mutual, there's still one side that will never die. This rose is our symbol. Um? <laughs> what now? Hey, that door is open. System lockdown enabled. I'm sorry, when did this funeral home become a Resident Evil freaking lockdown enabled? Is the Red Queen about to pop up? I remember where nothing is. Okay, but why is it double? Wait, that wasn't there before. Ever since my first day working here, I've felt a little strange. Now, after what happened that day, Things seem to be getting even stranger. I'd even go so far as to say creepy. I've been an embalmer for years now, and I'm very passionate about my job. I've always felt comfortable with what I do, so it's pretty unusual that I feel this way. Two of my colleagues have died. I had to embalm them both. However, grief can't explain this feeling. Up until just four days ago, I hadn't even known about the history of this funeral home. I already knew that it was ridiculously old, but what I didn't know was that it allegedly harbors some kind of powerful aura which traps and torments the spirits of people who have died in a state of grief or fear, and have at some point been associated with the building in one way or another. These associations apparently include those occurring post-mortem, such as embalmings and funerals, that's a bit rough. Well, so this is basically the worst place to be a funeral home. Okay. No. No, I still need another key. What is going on? What is what? I'm just gonna hide in a corner now, okay? But realistically, I, I, I don't want to get cornered in here, so... It's not you, right, Myrtle? And as long as that door stays closed, everything's okay. What the fuck? 
I'm sorry, is my... Am I looking through a camera? Are we about to go found footage style? Because my vision apparently just went to static. Is that a note on the... Like, I knew. I knew. I saw that, like... Board. And I... The notice board. And I was like, that's gonna be relevant, right? Did the ghost leave us a note? Or is this a note between something and something to do with the history of this place? I don't know, but let's read it and find out. Mrs. Rains, please tell your son to stop playing under the tables during funeral services. It's disruptive and upsetting to the grieving families. Today, he also stole one of the keys to the visitation room and was later attempting to open one of the drawers in the morgue. This type of behavior is unacceptable and will not be tolerated. If you do not start controlling him, I will take it upon myself to personally teach him a lesson, Michael. Oh. He stole one of the visitation keys, so... Um, do you think the door in here will be open now? Oh god. <laughs> yes, because chairs are that terrifying. Granted, this is kind of creepy. There's another note over there. To make things even weirder, this place has a serious lockdown system. So weird. Yesterday was the first time I've ever seen it used, and many of the workers, including myself, were ordered to wait in the family room until the situation was taken care of. No one I've spoken to about it knows why it was done, or at least they won't say. All I know is that these safety glass windows and electronic gates appear to be designed for keeping things in rather than out. I've seen Mert, like, believe that, but also why? I was the first responder that day. I was the first and only person to make it to Myrtle's side before she passed away. She managed to give Sullivan a parting, I love you, on that baby monitor, but that was the last communication they ever had. The last thing she ever did was give me that piece of paper. It was a short poem she had written for Sullivan earlier that day. She asked me to give it to him, and I promised her I would. Then she slipped away. I guess Sullivan had picked up by Myrtle's weak rasping in the baby monitor that something was happening to her, because soon after she had passed, he came running into the hall from the upstairs arrangement room. But he was too late. She was gone. That's when he broke down. I'd never seen him show so much emotion towards Myrtle before. Then, of course... The rest happened. I'll keep my promise, even now. It's all I can do for my dear friends. But what is your promise? And what is the rest that happened? There are a lot of strange things I've seen around this place. For instance, the fireplace that isn't even a real fireplace. I knew it! It's some kind of ladder shaft. But there's a tough metal grate fastened over it that appears to be controlled electronically, most likely by the lockdown system. I'm assuming the shaft leads down to the basement, but it must have been sealed off because it's not accessible from anywhere down there. Another thing I've started wondering about is a metal handle that's been sitting on Michael's desk for about a month now. I asked about it once out of curiosity, but he avoided giving me a direct answer. He told me it broke off of something. I had already assumed this, seeing as it's covered in dirt and rusted around the edges where it had clearly been attached to something for a very long time. Perhaps the biggest mystery I've encountered here is the place Myrtle always went for privacy. She was often depressed, so she was always going into the downstairs hall on her way to wherever it was she went to be alone. However, she seemed to vanish. The only place she could have gone from that hallway is down into the basement, but I went down there one day to ask her something and I couldn't find her. I'm wondering if there's a secret room somewhere down there. After all, I did learn from Michael that this building is from the 1600s, long before it was ever a funeral home. Buildings as old as this one sometimes have quite a few secret areas. So Michael clearly knows more than he's saying. Sounds like Myrtle knows some hidden passageways. Hopefully uh, she doesn't find a way to escape and 
find us in those hidden passageways later. <laughs> Secret areas. Uh, so I'm just going to take that as a big ass hint that we're going to find so many. They still haven't buried them. Sullivan has been lying in his coffin now for two days and Myrtle for three. Because Conrad refused to touch Myrtle's coffin after her funeral, it had to be put aside so Sullivan could have his. Conrad still simply doesn't want to have anything to do with the burial of either of them, even if all he's doing is preparing a future grave without actually touching the coffins. I'm starting to wonder if he had some type of unpleasant encounter with Myrtle and Sullivan's coffins, or he heard some absurd rumor about their corpses. What's sad is that Myrtle and Sullivan don't have relatives who care enough about their burials to actually do something about this. Michael was embarrassed to have to tell all the relatives and friends that the actual burials couldn't be held yet. Even so, none of them objected. Maybe they just didn't see a point in doing so, considering the person they would be doing it for is already gone. I don't know. As far as feeling nervous around coffins, I do get a strange vibe now in the visitation room. The atmosphere in there is starting to feel different. The air feels heavier, a little bit oppressive even. It seems to be more noticeable today than it was yesterday. I'm not quite sure if I believe in ghosts or not, but it seems to fit what I've heard before about locations having uncomfortable negative energy due to evil or extremely upset spirits. Maybe it's just normal stuff here. There aren't any windows in there, and it is the middle of summer. Yeah, yeah, it's totally stuffy here. It has nothing to do with all the stuff we've already mentioned about this place having an aura, and I don't know, Conrad's clearly on it. Conrad knows something, or something has happened with him, and I look forward to finding a note about that. This is just okay. Not weird at all. And find a note at the bottom of the stairs where you totally expect to find notes. Okay. It turns out that Devin got into the morgue by stealing Sullivan's key card from the office. Mrs. Raines had been in there and forgot to lock it when she left. Nobody knows exactly how the kid figured out the passcode, but considering what a flake his mother is, that's probably just something else she inadvertently compromised. They're burying Sullivan with a few of his belongings from the funeral home. I guess because he had worked here for so long and was so loyal to his job. Michael revealed that one of those belongings is Sullivan's keycard. Of course, they would need to deactivate it from the system to avoid any breaches in the chance that it was stolen. But then again, Mrs. Raines would be the one who would do that. I discovered earlier today that Devin had stolen the system lock override key as well and hidden it somewhere in the building. This has got to be the most troublesome, ill-behaved kid I have ever encountered. Sometimes you don't need to be a poltergeist to be a pain in the ass. His name may be Devin, but I'm just going to uh, mentally cross out the name and write in Peeves. Because <laughs> that's the impression of the like level of trouble he causes. Good old Peeves. I remember being really annoyed by Peeves in the PlayStation Harry Potter games. <laughs> There's like the one, is it the second one? Where you have to like, you're, you go to like nearly headless Nick's death day party and Peeves is like throwing food or messing around or whatever and you have to like, no you have to like throw food at him however many times to, you know, cause he's just being a butt. But he still deserved to be in the movies, come on. Okay, so this was actually longer than I thought it would be. Like, it's still a short game, but I thought it was going to be even shorter. So enjoy two videos of a similar length rather than one nearly an hour video, because I know how people love those. See you next week. Bye!